Hey, Jordan Bench here, jordanbench.com. In this video, I'm gonna help you on how to share your faith. So if you are someone that you feel as if um, you need to be sharing your faith, you need to be spreading the gospel, and maybe you're just, you're not doing it because of fear or because, you know, it's just intimidating or you're really worried about what people will think or what they'll say, what I wanna do is I wanna kinda of give you a different um, idea of how to share your faith, maybe give you some different uh, pointers and perspectives on how to do this and get you thinking of it in a different way so that it's actually easier to do and it's actually not something to be uh, fearful of or scared of. So the first thing I want to say is that it's not so much about um, that you go out and do witnessing. It's more so that you're actually a witness, that your life is known by all people, that there's no hidden or secret things in your life, that we are to, to be like an open epistle read and known by everyone. That's the whole idea of it is that people can see your life and that your life itself is a true witness, right? Because what's the problem with a lot of Christianity? I hear it time and time again from so many people is that Christians are all hypocrites. Now, that's not true, but a lot of them are. And it's because they speak something, but they don't live it. And that is a major problem, right? So we have to be people that we actually live what we say that we believe. And maybe if you're not, maybe you truly don't believe it, or maybe that there's um, a salvation that never really did occur. But that's a whole different topic. So anyways, what you want to do is, um, the easiest thing is, like I said, so it's by example, it's people, I'm telling you what, people pay attention. They watch your life and especially people who don't believe, what they're looking to do is they're looking at your life and they're waiting for you to actually mess up. They're waiting for you to fail. They're waiting to point the finger at you and say, ah, you know, you're not really, you're not really this or look at you, you did that. You know, you're, you don't believe what you say you believe and they're looking for those things. So how much more important is it that we actually live with integrity and that we actually live by godly standards, right? It is extremely important. So share your faith by loving others. I mean, it's it's simple. Like just start loving people, whether that's giving them a helping hand, whether that is uh, just being a blessing financially to them, whatever it is, you just need to just start loving others and just start helping out people in whatever situations that they're in, whether it's a homeless person or um, whether it's someone on the streets, or whether it's your neighbor, whether it's a family member, whatever it is, we can just start loving people in all different walks of life. And it's not like you, trust me, you definitely don't want to like pre-qualify them, well, oh, well, they're not worthy to receive my love because they did this or they're this kind of person. No, I mean, Jesus hung around the people who needed it the most, right? And he began to influence them. And that's exactly how you want to think of things, is how can I influence people? How can I help them out? So really the whole idea is that you're living godly and then what is in you, the light that's in you, it is now spreading and shining on other people and then helping them out, right? Um, the whole idea is like lifestyle Christianity it is meant to be a lifestyle. It's not meant to be like a once a week, I'm going to go out and, you know, try to convert people. That is not at all what I'm talking about. Um, because here's what happens when you, when you actually try to like tell people that they're wrong, what they believe and and you know, you're not believing right, or it's, well, you're actually wrong. And you do that, guess what happens? You get in arguments and debates, and you get in fights, and it doesn't do anything. Like, most people are pretty set in what they believe, and it's gonna be very hard to change them on what they believe. So doing it from that approach, it doesn't really work really well. It's just, it's just gonna cause division. Especially on social media, that is one of the worst places to do it, because you can't actually have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone face-to-face. -face. And for me, that's typically how I do it most of the time, because I need to have that one-on-one -on -one face to face time versus people hiding behind keyboards and fighting with each other. So especially here on YouTube, I'm not going to get involved in that. So uh, one thing to kind of point out, um, God, Jesus didn't leave us without help. He gave us the Holy Spirit. So as you're to go out and be a witness, he's, he's given us the Holy Spirit. And with that, you have the gifts of the Spirit. Now, if you're someone who's like, well, I don't believe in that. Well, then I'm sorry, I can't necessarily help you. All I can tell you is that um, I have seen it so much in my life and other people's life, how the gifts of the Spirit just flow, how they operate, and how He has completely, fully equipped us. So what I mean by this is like, let's say, for instance, I'm talking to somebody and God gives me a word of knowledge for that person. And that word of knowledge is something that nobody else knows. It's only that person knows. And it is like, bam, it just opens up that person's life. And they are now, the defense is down, the walls are down, the barriers are down. And now we're actually able to have a very meaningful conversation and possibly get them saved. 
Or maybe uh, I'm on the streets and I see somebody who has some type of physical ailment, or maybe they have pain, or maybe they're sickness, and I pray over them and they get healed. That right there is like, whoa, massive to them. Because most people have never seen healing in their life. We've seen it over and over again all the time. It's amazing what we've seen. But some people, they've never seen it before and they don't even know it's possible. And when they get healed, it's so amazing because what happens is they're like, okay, what just happened? I'm like, look, it's not me. It's Jesus in me. It's amazing what he does. He's, he's the healer and he's there to, uh, to set the captives free. So as you proclaim the gospel and all that, you know, there's no need for arguments or debates or anything because they just got touched by God. And that right there is going to get them to question so much of what they already know. So that right there is one way in uh, in sharing your faith of, of being a witness and just living this this lifestyle. Um, and there's another thing too I, I kind of want to mention. I think we kind of get into the place to where like as, as Christians, we put so much like pressure on ourselves that we have to seal the deal. That we're the ones that have to get the salvation, that we have to get someone saved. We put all the pressure on ourselves. And I set myself free of that a long time ago. What I did was I set my mind that, you know what, um, my job is just to be a blessing to people and just to let the light of God shine in me. And I am not going to be so focused on getting salvation. I'm going to be more focused on just loving people and letting that light shine. Because as that happens, we don't know where that person's at with with uh, their walk or, or how close God is to them of what he's doing in their life. We don't know how many times that person's been witnessed to, if they've ever been witnessed ever in their entire life. We don't know their whole story a lot of times. And so as I as we approach people, we don't know those things. And as we witness, maybe as we speak to them, we're like the fifth person who's witnessed to them and that is all that they needed. And then they're ready to get saved. Or maybe we're the very first person and you know they still have tons of walls up, tons of barriers up. So we don't know where we're at. So because of that, the whole idea is that we're going to witness to as many people as we can and we're going to be okay if they didn't get saved because we're going to trust that somebody else is going to come across their path and then lead them to Jesus in that sense. So I kind of take the pressure off myself and I just say, I'm just going to be a massive witness and I'm just going to show the love of God to the best of my ability uh, and watch what happens. And I actually have a, a scripture I wanted to share with you. It's uh, it's in 1 Corinthians so 1 Corinthians 3, and it goes in line with what I'm talking about. It's 1 Corinthians 3, 6, and it says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. And so what that's saying is, uh, you know, Paul's, Paul's saying, you know, I'm the one that planted the seed first. I planted, and then Apollos watered. So somebody planted, and then somebody else came across and watered. They, they nurtured the seed that was already uh, put in them and then God gave the increase. So what I'm saying is is we all work together in this as a body of believers It's not a one-man show. We all work together in this So the more and more we can begin to witness and to spread the gospel to as many people as possible Then more people are getting more points of contact of the gospel itself So it's not necessarily like a one-man show where you have to feel like you have to do everything all in one shot it's more so that we're just able to spread uh, as much as we can and more than likely, that person at some point is going to come to know Jesus because that's God's ultimate purpose is he wants us all to get saved and born again and to be with him ultimately and to be in fellowship and right relationship with him. That's his goal. So that right there is another thing is just to like set you free of that. And one of the last things I want to mention too is share your story with people. Share your testimony, how you got saved, what what was your life like before you got saved? What was your life like after you got saved? How has God uh, set you free of sin? How has he set you free of bondages, bondages, of addictions, whatever it is? What has he done in your life? What is he currently doing? You know, what is your life like now? Share your testimony with people. Share your story with people. People can't fight and argue with that thing. What they can do, though, is listen to a heartfelt testimony and God begins to work on that. He begins to work on their heart. And it's just amazing what happens when you share your story with people, when you share your testimony with people. So if you haven't already, go ahead and do that. So I hope you like this video. I hope it gave you some ideas, some pointers of what you can do. Um, go ahead and comment below and let me know, like, okay, uh, what's, your what's your current situation? Where are you at right now? Have you began to share your story? Have you began to share your testimony? Have you began witnessing? Have you seen results? Have you seen success? Uh, have you not done it at all? Or maybe you've had problems or struggles in the past. Whatever it is, just let me know the situation below. 
And also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, go ahead and do so. I'm going to put out as many uh, content uh, videos as I can, trying to give as much value and help as much as I can. Maybe you have questions for me that are on videos that you want me to do in the future on how I can help you, especially with like, uh, you know, um, maybe basic Bible things uh, on how to get started, whatever it may be. But go ahead and comment below and I will see you in the next video.